Okay. When you, all of you are successful because you have surrounded yourself with people who maybe didn't know as much, but they were loyal and dedicated to you for giving them the opportunity to work with you. And this is the case with, with Renat. Talking about loyalty, this man, he, he was, he, when we stayed down at the, in the middle school, okay, they would water the field, the football field, in the day for maybe a, a couple hours. This guy, when it got dark, he'd go up, he'd get in his car, he'd go up to the field, he'd turn the water on. He may stay there for three or four hours. He'd come, we'd all be sleeping, he'd come back in. Is that right? He did that, if he didn't do that at least five times, every night there. Well, coach, how about, how about just telling us what did what did this what did this weekend mean to you? What did what did you tell us uh, what your feelings? What would happen here? Well, now that I'm back down to earth, I wasn't on earth uh, last night, mm -hmm. but now that I'm back down to earth, that it, uh, it's a fulfilling weekend for me. And I originally said I wasn't coming, and then I started thinking. I started telling my wife, uh, no, this, this this is a special group, and. Uh, I want to be a part of that, and uh, I just can't tell you how excited I was to come. And uh, even though I'm not around the corner, that didn't mean a thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, just to hear how well all of you are doing—that's the important thing. And we were talking about Coach Bernazzi. You talk about when you hire assistant coaches. I don't really care if you know a lot of football, mm -hmm. but I want you to be loyal, and I want you to be able to get along with kids. And we had three assistant coaches. I coached for 24 years in high school, and I wouldn't trade those three guys for anybody that I worked for. It was just, and, and Coach Peters, that was his first job. Coach Westoff, that was his first job. And these guys just, they hit it off real well. And, and the thing about it is, those three guys, they got along so well that every Saturday night, they were somewhere for dinner because they didn't have any children at the time and they, they had, were able to run the, the, the gamut as far as the nightlife and things like this is concerned. But uh, just to see, the, getting back to the original question, just to see all you guys doing well in your own way, and, uh, it just, just brings great satisfaction to anyone who uh, touched you guys. Well, I, I, uh, I noticed uh, almost every guy here came up and told you uh, how much something you said to them has shaped their lives. Did you have any idea at that time what you were doing, how much impact you'd have on us? I, I knew you guys had an undefeated ninth grade team, right? You were undefeated. So I was excited about that because I said, well, maybe we got some kids here at Peters Township now who are going to stick together and, and try to do something. And. Uh, Quite frankly, the first game of the year, uh, the California game. California comes from the Mon Valley. Uh, that, uh, kids. There's a tradition of football in the Mon Valley. And I'm not, I lived in Belvoir, but I'm not a Mon Valley person. I'm originally from the Uniontown area. But the way we, re those guys from California weren't ready to play football that day. They thought they had a win under their belt. They just showed up. The way we executed on offense and hit on defense, I knew right then. I said, and I told our assistant, I think we got something here, and, uh, and and we knew McGuppy was going to be tough. But I didn't think McGuppy was going to be as tough as they were. We had a hell of a time with them that day. But then after that, uh, our confidence was up, and the mesh was real good. The camaraderie is great. Look at it now. Who would have thought? 38 years later, here they are. And believe me, this is the satisfaction you get out of coaching, buddy. It wasn't that $1,200 I got from coaching. <laughs> no way. <laughs> well, there, there were a lot of guys that uh, that you coached also. In fact, my brothers, uh, Year, and, and other guys that, that weren't able to make it. And I'm going to try to get the uh, video out to a couple other guys. That would be can, great. Can That's you just great. talk about maybe some of the oh, other sure. memories you uh, sure. Cavasini, the quarterback, Mike Doyle, the running back. Mike Doyle, tremendous potential. He really had tremendous potential. Speed. I can remember, uh, I think it was his, it might have been his, it almost 
my first year there. We're at McGuffey. Yeah. My brother's year was your first year. Yeah, first year. And we're running that uh, 70, 779 option to the right and to the left, the 71 and the 79. And Mike Doyle was just, no matter what side we put him on, he was always open. And we ended up winning the game. Timmy McDonald tackled the McGuffey kid at the six inch line. And I thought, oh, we're the McGuffey. Officials are going to give it to him. <laughs> but they didn't. It was fourth down and inches. And, and I remember Timmy putting the hit on the guy from his linebacker position that uh, got us over the hump. And that's the only game we won that year. You know? But uh, it, it was, and it was all attitude. You know, some of those guys just played football to play football. Uh, football is life. You want to win. All of you are winners. Right? You won in football. You won in life. It's a carryover. Well, you're sure some of those guys. Uh, I don't know what Mike Doyle does, but I'm sure he's doing well. And your brother and and, and all these other guys that uh, we mentioned. But that first year. When I saw that team, those guys ran out on the first practice. I said, we've got some people here that should respond. We've got some size and that kid Engelman that we talked about. Or that man now, you tell him where he is. But if you put him on, look at him from the back, boy, he, he, was, he was Division I material. But uh, the when thing you... that disappointed me most about that team, and then I find out later, is that uh, Burgettstown hadn't won a game, and we had one win. Mm -hmm. And Burgettstown's coming to our place. Uh, it was homecoming game. Shoot, we got we got to get Burgettstown here. Yeah. And Burgettstown beats us seven nothing. Then I find out a couple of days later that they had this huge homecoming party the night before. I didn't know that it happened. Or we weren't calling people or anything like that. The day after. But. Well, that, you, you talked. Uh, you did. You said a lot of things about how you had to kind of change the culture of Peters Township with the Bolt and how they didn't invest. And in, in, so when you came in, that team that they were used to being kind of one and six all the time, right. weren't they? And uh, you had to I, make it. You had to change how I, we look at ourselves. I, 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 I confide some things in to you guys. That, you know, they play. Eight football games. That's all they would play. Mm -hmm. Is eight games. So I went into his office after the first season, and I said, "Hey, Jerry, I said, hey, I want to play as many games. I want to play as many games as the other teams because we're not being fair to the kids. They're out there working. They want to play the game. That's the reward. Play the game." Here's what he said to me. Sure as I'm sitting here. He said, if you play another game, you know that you could possibly lose that game? <laughs> now, this is about our season, Coach? You're talking oh, about? No, that's my first year. After the first year, we were one and seven. Mm -hmm. You only played eight games. Oh, gotcha. So I wanted these kids to be able to play nine games like mm -hmm. everybody else. You could lose another he game. Told me, he said, Run There's a chance. A, you run. He, he said it in such a way, like you run the risk of losing another game. But how did you change? How did? How did you? I remember when, when uh, my brother said he, he came into uh, the room and first thing he said was guards pull, don't they? Because you're going to do something else with that. You're going to do something else with offense. You're going to you're going to start getting us into the 1970s. Well, but could, can you talk? Because you really did change how everybody looked at that program. Again. In your life today, you're as good as the people who work for you, right? Every one of you in your own way, you're as good as the people who work for you. My first year, second year it started to come around, third year, fourth year, we had fun. Only because, hey, I said this early on, I'll show you a program that wins, I can't win the game. That's yep. where you come in. And Fortunately, here comes this ninth grade team that was undefeated. Hell, when you're ninth grade, I was ready to bring you up. We're gonna play. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's play. <laughs> what, what I miss, guys? What I miss? Questions? Any other questions? What I miss? 
Don't hesitate. You have something to ask. Don't hesitate. All right. Well, you know, I, I, I've confided in you. Uh, I don't. I wouldn't tell everybody what I said to you around this table or even last night because you didn't know. You didn't know what we were up against. And when we won those two years, I said to my wife, I said, we've got to somehow find a way to buy a house in Peters Township. I said, I could coach here forever. And, and then after that first winning season, they did give me a raise from $1,200 to $1,900. Yeah. So things, things, things were looking, looking pretty good. And, uh, but you, you didn't know. The, the back, the, the, and, and it wasn't it wasn't with the school board. I never I never met a school board member as long as I was at Peters Township. I, I, my second inter my first interview I got lost I'm trying to find him. <laughs> I'm in Bethel Park asking him how do I get to Peters Township? <laughs> Wait, so you don't want to go there? <laughs> <laughs> you go up here and turn right to left. That'll be McMurray Road. You stay on there. You're going to get into Peters Township. <laughs> But I had two interviews. The first was with the principal and the, the superintendent, and the second one was with the principal and the superintendent. And uh, I said to, to uh, Dr. Jack, and he really, he, uh, so he came from TJ. And uh, more so than, uh, than the principal, Dr. Jack wanted to turn that thing around. He, he really did. You, you may not know that, but he, he, he really, he really wanted to, to see this thing fly. And I remember coming off the field the first game at Chartier's Houston that Patterson beat us 28-0. Yeah. And uh, we had guys, they, they couldn't block. We were using 53 and 54 with some stunts. In. And their coach, never, he was a Waynesburg when I was there. And he never played the game. And, that, and you don't have to play the game to be a good coach. I'm not saying that. But what was hard for me to accept is this guy beat me 28 nothing with my first head coaching job. <laughs> and then I look at the film and you see so many things that they did wrong. But man, they had those line, those big linebackers and linemen. They, he really had a good run of kids. And he pretty much proved. When he went to Washington, Washington was always a pretty good football team, and uh, he, he really didn't. He didn't even uh, continue. Right, he didn't didn't continue that program. But anyway, I said to Dr. Jack after the second interview, I said, uh, "When do I meet with the board?" And he said, "You don't meet with the board." And uh, I found out later that he had taught a course. So he was a principal at TJ when I was an assistant coach. Elizabeth Cole, TJ, TJ couldn't beat the good sisters of the poor. Oh, oh, I'm Tim. Well, before Batman, before Batman, okay, before Batman, and I was an assistant Elizabeth Cole, and I'm not. Rule of thumb is, and I don't know how true this is, but rule of thumb is, if you are an assistant coach and you are genuinely interest, interested in becoming a head coach, in six years as an assistant, you are ready. Okay? But here I am at Elizabeth Board. I'm there 11 years now. Okay? My college coach is living in TJ. He lives in the TJ school district. He's now selling rings. Balfour, you remember those rings? Mm -hmm. he, was sell, he was selling those rings, going around the school. And he called me up when the TJ job came open. And he said, Coach, you, better go, you better go after that. He said, it's a sleeping giant. He said, you, I said, Coach, they fire, they fire coaches like every second year. Guys are <laughs> getting hired and fired. And I said, oh. Uh, I said, quite frankly, I'm afraid. I was afraid to fail. And so for that reason, and it happened again. Because they were just turning over. I said, no. And damn it, wouldn't you know it that Manzini comes in there in that year, turns that thing around, and that guy's winning even. They're winning today. Yeah. 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 Top flight program. Yeah. yeah. Anybody else have any questions that I didn't ask? Coach. Yeah. When, when, you, when you saw this coming up in night grade, were you involved with developing uh, the program for us from the standpoint of plays? Uh, you talked about assistant coaches. Okay. 
Uh, I had my first year, uh, Scafuri was a holdover, yeah. and Siosi was a holdover. And, uh, That's a good way to describe you, it. You, 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 <laughs> no. <laughs> please, <laughs> please, got it, got it. Try please. Who <laughs> said? So, and and uh, there, and after what they said to us at that uh, in service day, you know, so there, um, there, there was this little bit of a friction that was going on. That, but you know, as the head coach now, you know, you're an assistant coach. I'm the head coach. They don't fire assistant coaches. They fire head coaches. And so for that particular reason, I, I thought to myself, hey, this is the way it's going to be. And we started the midget program. Remember when we started that midget program? But, but you know what happened? We get these frustrated jocks who were never was or, or has beens, and they're coaching, and they're running double reverses and all that. What the? We don't need that. Line those kids up and run the football straight ahead. Let them learn how to run. You only need three or four plays. Get the kids acclimated to the program. And uh, that that just never it never flew. But I I couldn't control the the midget program. I was I was I, I too busy. Uh, actually uh, felt badly that the thing was gone the way it did. But the assistant coaches I could control, and I told CLC, these are the players. This, this is what these kids are going to see in high school, and you do it right now. Yeah. Those plays that you ran in ninth grade, you ran. Well, I didn't see too many days. I hope the hell was running, running the same thing. But, but that's basically, uh, that's what it is. I mean, you get acclimated to the program and get, get adjusted to what's happening. And, and then go from there. But as I told you before, I, I, I would rather start in football your sophomore year right after your ninth grade year quit because uh, I was that excited about uh, getting started. It all worked out well. No regrets. Beauty. Stuff like this. I was talking to, uh, oh, I was talking to a guy. I, I uh, built some friendships uh, where I live, a lot of retirees, and uh, I was talking to a guy who was a, a, an athletic director up in uh, Yeah. Oh, he's he, he died, yeah. 
<laughs> he died. Oh, he was something else. Yeah. He, uh, you know what, Coach? I beat him every time. Here's the Browns. Beat him every time. He hated me. No, 